Hey everybody, I'm PJ with Princess Craft RV here in Round Rock, Texas. Today I get to show you the 2020 Cricut. It's made by Taxa Outdoors and it is an amazing piece of off-road gear. It's 15 feet long, fits in a garage, and it weighs 1,800 pounds, so easily towed by a four-cylinder vehicle. If you guys are interested in this, stick around. We're going to go through it and show you all of the intricacies, the ins and outs of this trailer. It's different than probably anything that you have seen. So let's do that. In the meantime, thanks for watching. If you want to see more walkthrough videos, subscribe to the channel and be sure to click the little bell so you get notified whenever a new one comes out. All right, let's go inside and take a look at the Cricut. The first thing that you'll notice in here is that it is very different than a standard travel trailer. The space feels very open, even for something this size. Let's start out by talking about dimensions. The height on this right here is about 6'4". It does slope down in the back. Once you get to this area, you're assuming that you're sitting down. But as many of you know, I'm five foot tall. There is about six foot four right here at the space at the entrance. Now, the construction in this is very different. Normally I talk about that on the outside, but it is so apparent on the inside. These panels that you're looking at, they're aluminum composite panels. Um, they are painted on the outside. They're durable. They're strong. It is, it is built in such a unique way for style, for aerodynamics, for usability. And the aluminum framing of this is all on the inside. So you can actually see how this is framed up. Everything is visible. It makes it easy to look at to inspect for repairs. Um, and it just adds to the ruggedness of the trailer. The other thing that you'll notice is the wiring in here is also accessible. Now it's not readily visible but you'll notice in some of the areas there is some wire casing that runs through. So if you wanted to make modifications or tap into something or find an issue, again, very simple to do. It's not where I usually start, but that is such an integral part of what you see when you walk in this trailer. I felt like it was a great place to begin. Let's start then by taking a look across the front. Now this is kind of where all of the controls are. It is a, a birch. It is completely made out of a birch paneling. Um, over here on the right, you've got the knife holders. You've got little holes here where you could put cooking utensils, flashlights, any other type of gear. And you know, you'll actually find that throughout this trailer. Every place that you look, Right up here in the corner, there's another three holes here. A lot of people refer them to places that you could hang your toothbrush, but really you could put anything there. You could hang it in the, in the little holes here, or you could use a bungee, a strap, you could hook to it. Um, these trailers are meant to be so useful and so versatile that you could put anything from climbing gear to, you know, hanging nets for your fresh fruit, just about anything you want. You'll find those hooks up at the top. You'll find them on corners. You'll find them in the door, lots of places throughout this trailer. I'll try to point them out as we go along. So you've certainly got this extra added piece right here on the side, nice counter space. When you open up the center, you've got the two burners and the sink all-in-one aluminum structure. Uh, the, the faucet kind of flips up. Um, you do have a, a space right here. It could be used for a lot of things. You could set your extra little coffee pot there, uh, whatever you wanted. But when you're not using the stove or the sink, this folds down so that you have full counter space. That's really nice because 
not everybody is using a sink and a stove all the time. You can do anything you need up here. Uh, this is actually the up and down motion. I'm going to just give you a quick demonstration and we'll go through it uh, later. But the way this is set up, it has these little bungees here and that actually pulls the tent in when you put it up and down. So all you do here is give it a pull and this top comes down and give it a push and it goes right back up. Very easy to do. I can do it one handed. So setting it up and down, super simple, all done right here in the front. Um, as you come over to the other side, you've got three more hooks here, a 110 plug on the side. And of course, 110 plugs are not going to work unless you're plugged in at a campground. If you look at the storage that they have here, you've got the cubbies. Now this is all CNC cut here. So this birch panel on the front is all one piece. Cubbies on the side, open space here. This fits a nice Coleman stove or anything like that very easily. So you've got two slide ins right here. Uh, below you've got some venting because this trailer has a Truma water heater which is also your heat. So that is right underneath this panel. You notice that there's screws all around so things can easily come off. Um, panels can be taken off, uh, but not a lot of plastic clips that you turn or anything like that. It's all meant to be durable, but accessible. You have two vents over here on the left side and then two vents on the right side. That is the furnace because that Truma water heater under there is also the furnace if you need that. The controls for that are right up here. You've got the water heater and then uh, right here, which turns on the water. Uh, this, these three are the lights. And then this button right here is gonna control the Truma to say if you would like the heat to come out. Down here, you have fuses for all the lights and the furnace and all the other things down here, the water heater. So everything right up front is accessible. If you somehow blow a fuse, you just get to deal with it right here in front. Another 110 outlet. So you've got one on both sides. You know, you don't know which side of the counter you might be working from. The converter is on this panel as well. Now it's going to be the fuses and the breakers, just like you'd have on any RV where the converter when you plug in is going to convert the power to 12 volt. Again, I love the accessibility here in this front panel. This space right under here, right now you'll see it has a box that has a porta potty in it. But if you didn't want to carry a porta potty in that space, you certainly could store more gear there, an extra ice chest, anything you wanted to keep there. Now, something else that isn't readily apparent on this front panel is that there are wing nuts under here, three different wing nuts that if you loosen those, this entire compartment slides out. That is super cool because it gives you access to the plumbing and anything in the back that you might need to see and work on. That's a great feature. You know, they tried to figure out what was useful and what was easily uh, checked or maintained or repaired. Uh, always, you know, a, a great feature to have that built in to the design of the trailer. Um, speaking of the design of this trailer, if you really don't know a lot about where the inspiration came from, uh, it was designed by Garrett Finney, who has an architectural background, who also uh, was a designer for the NASA habitats. So he really thinks of this as a mobile human habitat. And that's what you'll see all over their website. They do a great job in explaining kind of some of the inspiration here. Alrighty, so this front cabinet's very useful, does everything you need as far as kitchen, storage, countertop. Uh, next to that, there is an optional fridge. Now this is the Dometic fridge. It is a 12 volt and it's very efficient and you can actually set the temperature on it. So you could use it as a freezer or you could use it as a refrigerator. Easy to move in and out. 
You could use it in other places, but it has a real nice place to sit right here. Again, it is an option on the Cricut. Above that, this is the air conditioner. There is a 5,000 uh, BTU window unit in this, and uh, it is actually cut into a panel. Now, if you don't get the 5,000 BTU air conditioner, then there is a window here. So the window will match what's on the other side. We do get questions about whether you could retrofit the AC. And the answer is yes. I mean, there is a few holes you have to drill to put some of the bolts in for the panel, but for the most part, it's not terribly difficult to do. So a retrofit is possible on that. And it's also possible to go back the other way. Just fill in the bolt holes and then retrofit a window here if you wanted to do it that way. Always something that can be done after the fact. Let's move back just a little bit. On this corner panel here, the aluminum framing, uh, this is part of the latch that latches the roof down. So we'll show you that when we go through how to open and close it, which we'll do at the end. Uh, and this is lighting here. Uh, the lighting in this, you can see this controls the one right up front. That is second lighting in the back, kind of hard to see because it's under the bunks. And then a third one, which is a red light right at the top. So you've got different lighting options right here on this panel. The other lighting options are right here. So you can see that that one is the one up front. So this second button is the step light outside. The third one is going to be the LED lighting that's on the roof of the exterior. And so you've got so many different lighting options, switches here, and then some on the front control. These are the ones that if you're crawling into bed, these are the ones you're gonna wanna turn off last, of course, so they're the ones right above the bed. Okay, let's just look around, see if we missed anything. Um, the windows that are sewn in, they're all double stitched with a screen on this top canvas part. We always get a lot of questions about canvas. You know, is it waterproof? Yes. Um, is it gonna, how long is it gonna last? Well, this is a very durable material. It can be replaced. It's not difficult to do. Um, but, you know, if it's reasonably taken care of, this should be extremely durable and could easily last, you know, a, a very long time on your trailer. You know, I'd love to tell you 10 years, 20 years, but you know, I've seen things that are supposed to last three years, last 20. Uh, it's really all about the care that you take. This is the most durable material that they could find. It's lightweight. Um, then you also have the cover that goes above it. So you can unhook that. You do have the canvas that rolls up and then has a zipper in it. It's not Velcroed. It's zippered all the way across. So you can open these for the screen or zipper the canvas up on this side. Again, I wouldn't worry about the durability of the canvas. It is strong. It is water repellent. It's going to do a great job for you. Over here on this side where the door is, there is another little panel right here to hook things to on the door. I love that part. The window in the door gives you great ventilation on this side. Uh, if you need to close these because of rain or, or anything like that, these windows have the latches that open and they pop open and with a little knob to tighten them at whatever opening space you want. Of course, dual pane windows with the blackout shade and the screen. Now this is the same on the door as it is on the side window and the window in the back. It, it's really wonderful. They do a great job in getting you all the ventilation you need if you need to keep these closed because rain's not gonna get in with an awning style window. All right, there is also a soft good package that you can get with this. And the reason I mention this now, it has a shower tent that you can put outside an awning, but it also has a screen that goes across this door. Right now we have it stored in here, but the way it goes on, it simply Velcros across the top and on the sides 
so that you can open the door completely on a nice day and get full ventilation for your door opening. Just another great idea for bringing the outside in. That's really what this is designed to do, is to have the outside inside your camper. You know, I, I think the thought is you'll be outside if you can, but if you need to be inside for rain or for sleeping or preparing your food, we want you to have a nice experience inside too. They, uh, Taxa has just done such a great job in that. All right, let's move to the back. Now in front of this area that has your two batteries, you have charging ports. This one is the USBs. This one is a standard 12 volt. You have these same two charging ports up front in your kitchen panel as well. Uh, very useful to have those any place you might be charging your phone, your computer, or need to run a 12 volt appliance. This is a voltmeter. That voltmeter is telling you the amount of charge you have on these two batteries that are in here. So it's a great thing to keep an eye on uh, to determine if you need to put a solar panel out if you're boondocking or anything like that. So that will always display the voltage that you have in your batteries at that time. All right, there's one more. If you look up here, let's see if we can put this seat down. Right behind here, you have another charging port and that works for the refrigerator that's right here. So it is right here in this front corner. So in the seating space or the sleeping area, which of course is both in a Cricut, then you have the first area that has a table. A table pole fits right here with a tabletop that can actually spin either direction uh, you could work on a computer or you could use it as an eating dining table. Spin it however it suits you the best. Uh, each side of these benches flip up. Now the one on this side flips up here. You can clip these legs down on both sides and then take this cord and hook it into the little space that's built into the framing. And then it's up out of the way and you can have a full open space here. You notice underneath we have the tall leg for the table actually stored right there. You can also, when you're using the tall leg, store the short leg there. So either way, it has a place for that leg to go to stay out of the way. The table has a tall leg for a table. The short leg actually comes down to provide the table as a base for the rest of the sleeping berth. So the cushion that stores really nicely back here behind the seating actually goes in on top of the tabletop when you're using the short leg and it creates a 59 inch by 75 inch long bed. Almost a full queen, not quite, but very close. So if you remove that cushion from the back where I like to store it right here, this seating on this side does the same thing. You can lift it up and of course this will hook right here. It is tight because it's a little bungee and it hooks right there on that latch in the framing. So underneath this bench is where the batteries and the electrical connections are. Uh, what you'll see here is a top panel. You've got two little screws to take off and you can access those batteries. It does hold two batteries in this unit. On the back side here uh, you have another access panel uh, which there's a battery disconnect right on the other side. All the electrical right here under this seating, easy access. This flips up as well, and you can hook this over here on these catches. Uh, like we talked about, there's so many places to attach things because really, depending on what gear you're carrying, you set this up to be what you need it to be. You've got hooks right here. Um, on both sides so that one can hook right there leave these hatches open of course full storage back here under the bed what you're seeing right here this is the outside shower tent uh, it does come like I said with the soft goods package which has the screen for the door the shower tent and the awning alrighty this folds right back down let's take a look on the other side you open that up and of course it can bungee out of the way as well. 
this is going to give you too large access to storage. You do have access here in case you have a bed made and access from the back to these two compartments. But a lot of storage under here as well. You can just really fit so much gear in these spaces under the bed. And a lot of people in a trailer like this, they're gonna hang nets from the ceiling uh, and those nets can hold more gear. Speaking of the ceiling, we have in this unit two kids berths. Now these are 22 inches wide, they're 60 inches long, and they hold 130 pounds. So they're great for kids. If you have four adults that need to go camping, probably need to move up to the Mantis. But the way these uh, attach is they actually are clipped into the ceiling. Again, every crossbar has holes in it for bungees, for attachments, for gear, whatever you need. And it's a very simple process. All you do is loosen this bungee right here and the berth comes down. It's that simple. When you're done using it, you just bungee it right back up again. You can actually purchase these with one kid's berth or with two. It's available either way, of course. Now, another thing that you'll find on this roof is gonna be a fantastic fan right here. If you're familiar with RVs at all, you know how great these are. You've got lots of airflow and ventilation in this trailer. If it's a hot day, you don't wanna run the AC, open the vent, turn it on. You've got three speeds here and it does pull air out or blow air in either way. So you can actually get ventilation and a breeze going inside the trailer. Great thing for an off-road style trailer like this. All right, I think we've covered almost everything. I love looking down through the roof. You can see again, all the crossbars, all the connection points. The lights up here, you've got, you can just configure this to be anything that you want it to be. All right, well, I tell you what, next let's go look around outside and then we'll show you how to put it up and down. Okay, the first thing I wanna show you on the outside is that I love the solid feel of how this door closes. It's a slam latch, the standard RV latch, of course, with another attachment point at the edge of the door, but just such a solid feel out here. Again, this is a painted aluminum composite on the outside, very durable. And you know, uh, it's meant to be a piece of gear, not to be a polished up shiny thing. But if you take care of it, it'll last you a really long time. All right, do you remember I mentioned there is a light on the step, it's red. Uh, you may not be able to see it now, but it lights up the step so your campsite is nice and lit up. You've also got the light strip of LEDs that is on the roof. Lights up the side of the camper, makes it really easy to move around, particularly if you're boondocking and you're not at a campsite and it's really dark. Um, as we move to the back, 15 inch wheels, you've got off-road tires on here, uh, the steel fender here with a nice little Cricut cutout, I love that. Another great attachment point. Uh, great decals, but here is a real nice design because not only is this a great seat, uh, but you could also use all of these cutouts for attachment points. Uh, it's not going to hold the mud. It's not going to be hard to clean up. It's powder coated just like the fender. So it's also a great step if you wanted to get up and put something on the Thule roof rack, or you could tie jerry cans on here, camping gear, just anything you need on this step. All right, right here in front, there is another plug-in right here. Another great 12 volt plug. Let's move around to the back. Uh, again, you've got the great RV latch here, but what I love about this back hatch is it's just as solid of a fit but all you have to do is unlatch it. It's gonna open, the gas props work beautifully. What we didn't talk about from this uh, end of the trailer is that huge ventilation here. You've got shade, you could put your chairs under here. It does have the window in it, 
but you can see the framing on the door has attachment points in two different places and right here in the center. Very simple, easy to work with, access to the storage underneath these beds right here. You know, something else that we didn't talk about is when you lift this panel, there is a spot here that holds the crank for the four stabilizer jacks on each corner of this trailer. Now, that doesn't seem like much, but I cannot tell you how many times when I'm uh, loading and unloading trailers that I cannot remember where this crank handle is to manually bring them up and down. It's simple to do, but if you can't find the crank, ah. Uh, so I love having that just a nice out of the way place, easy to access right here. It's also a good place to see the electrical and the cord that runs through. Everything is accessible. You can actually see where all that electrical is right here along the side and the corners of the trailer. All right, so this back hatch opens up. Um, remember we talked about the screen that crosses on the door so that you can leave your door open. There is not a screen for this back hatch. I know that's a question that we get, uh, but a lot of people have made their own, uh, but there, there isn't one that comes with it. Uh, there are a lot of folks too that get uh, a screen cover like a mosquito net and just run it over the hatch, comes down on the sides, works great. Uh, gives you a little more open space, keeps the bugs out. Easy way to do it. All right, let's keep moving around this trailer and take a look at a few more things. This roof rack up here, it is a Thule rack. It is an option on the Cricut. It holds 165 pounds and of course, all the Thule attachments will work with it. Another side step over here. And this is where you would fill your fresh water tank. There's a 15 gallon fresh water tank on this and a 16 gallon gray tank. We'll look at that in just a minute. And next to it, this is the solar plug-in. This is a standard solar plug. If you had a portable solar panel that you wanted to set out in the sun and just plug in right here, it is wired directly to the batteries. So all you gotta do is plug it in, charge your batteries. Uh, some venting here, another little cricket on these fenders that are powder coated, I love that. So this is the 5000 BTU air conditioner we talked about on the inside. It is an option. If you don't have the AC, you would have a window here. Uh, notice the aluminum plate on the outside. There's attachment points, one on this side, three on this side, where you can hang outside gear, uh, attach more things. Whatever type of camping you're doing, there's always one more place that you'll need something to hook onto. Now, when you're traveling, you will put a cover on this and it actually snaps into place, keeps it covered going down the road. Let's look down here. Now under here, you'll see this is your gray tank uh, with your gray tank uh, drain. It is a regular hose bib drain with a slice valve on the end. So, so very simple, you hook up your hose, pull the slice valve, on a trailer like this, a lot of people would use a small, say, 15-gallon tote tank that you could take to a dump station or dump in a uh, toilet at a campground. Or you can also carry it and, you know, when you're home, you can dump it that way into a bucket and put it in your garden. Uh, depending, as long as you don't use any bleach or any chemicals and it's just a little soapy water, great for your garden or your grass when you get home. All righty. Up front, this is the venting for the Truma. Remember, that's the water heater that also is your furnace. If you wanted to hook up directly to the hydrant at the campground and not use uh, the water tank that's in the back, you would hook up right here, and it goes directly into your faucet. Below, this is your 30-amp plug-in. Uh, the cord does come with it. Uh, it does have a light on it to tell you that you have electricity actually coming from the source. So if you have a problem inside, you'll be able to tell whether it's actually from the source or something in your trailer. Great feature there. Okay, as we come around the front, 
The first thing I notice is this rock guard. You know, it's going to keep the front of your trailer from getting beat up by all those rocks that get kicked up by a vehicle. So great to have that across the bottom. And just above it right here, there is a hot and cold shower. Uh, this can be used to spray off anything. You've got hot and cold and it's a quick disconnect, so you don't have to screw it in, try to get it tight. Very simple to attach this and unattach it and store it inside. All right, let's look underneath here because this trailer has something unusual that you won't see a lot of places. It has a built-in auto brake. So these are torsion axles with electric brakes on them, but in order to make your vehicle connect with it, you have to have a brake controller installed in your vehicle. That has traditionally been the way it works. This trailer has an auto brake built on the trailer. So when you plug into it, you will have a, a clicker on the key fob that uh, will actually control this auto brake so you don't have to worry about adding a brake control to your vehicle. It's right here on the trailer. That's a great feature. Next to that, two 20-pound propane tanks with the hard shell cover. All you have to do is undo the screws, flip the top up to turn it on and off, and of course lift it off when you're ready to refill them. Nice solid feature. Standard front jack. What, they do something that I think is really cool. The seven-way plug on the front, when you're not using it, you don't want it to lay in the dirt, get mud in it, um, it, it really uh, makes them not function very well after a while and sometimes they even get run over or drug. So it actually has a clip-in space right here that keeps it out of the way, out of the dirt and the moisture so that you don't have any problems with that plug. The front frame of this, this is the clip-in. When we pull the roof down, it's going to clip in right here and of course three more attachment points for any type of gear. But I love to point this out. This is actually half of the word taxa. If you put a mirror up against it, then you can actually see taxa with it on both sides. It's just a fun thing that's built into it, but this right here works great as a bottle opener. So, ah, double use, right? Okay, let's move around to the front of it. The way they do their door catch is it's just a plunger. So this just fits right in this space when you open the door. You don't have anything to clip in or unclip. Just push it right against there and it's popped into place and the wind can't move it around. Uh, the awning, again, that is part of the soft goods package. The awning, the shower tent and the screen cover on the door. Uh, it's a great awning that's attached out there. Uh, gives you a lot of shade out here, makes the outside of your trailer comfortable in a hot sunny day if you can't find any shade, uh, keeps the rain off, the wind off. I love the awnings on this trailer, just make it more usable out there. All right, I think I've covered a lot of things on this trailer. If I missed it, please comment below, we'll get you an answer. But I think now it's time just to show you how the top goes up and down. So to put the top down on this, you notice there's all these bungees that attach in different places to help you pull the tent in. All you do is give this a tug, the whole thing comes down, and the tent, for the most part, pulls in. But you'll want to go around and double check that nothing is out, and this top goes all the way down. Once you pull it down, you have two hooks here on the side, right there, and it actually brings it down. To unlatch it, push the thumb latch, it attaches, opens up, and you just simply push this straight up and it goes right back up again. Very simple. You don't have to push that hard. The gas props actually do most of the work, especially when you're going up. So very simple operation. When it's down, you have a latch in front that you want to be sure to engage. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so your roof is latched down, but as a safety precaution, you have a latch in the front that you want to push in, be sure it clips into place, and that gets you fully 
ready to travel. Be sure to walk around. Be sure your jacks are up. Everything looks like it's in good shape. Hook up. Engage your brake control and you're ready to go. All right, we've learned a lot of great things about this cricket today, but I know there's something I haven't covered. I hope you'll let us know so we can answer your questions. I'm PJ with Princess Craft RV here in Round Rock, Texas. I'd love for you to come see us, call us, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you next time.